Yeah, so um, last week we had guys starting to come back to campus. These are players who were rehabbing from injuries and things of that nature. Uh, so they were some of the first ones allowed because they're, you know, getting their their treatment and whatnot. So they were able to do that. And you're starting slowly to see the other guys making their way back down uh, to Coral Gables. Uh it was put out on social media that Miami got access to the green tree practice fields um, this past week. So it seems, you know, there's guys who are getting out there. They're starting to, you know, do their own player led workouts and things like that. Uh, maybe in the near future, um, the weight room and strength and conditioning coach uh, Feely can get in there and uh, start working with guys in, in that way. And uh, yeah, you know, it's small steps, but um a small step is still a step, and that's a thing that some people don't necessarily realize. You know, sometimes you want to fast forward to the uh, end of the race, but you know, like a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, and you know, it might not seem monumental at the time, but it still is movement, and that's what we're starting to see. So, uh, Blake James, the athletic director, said that he uh, anticipates, or uh, he. I don't know what the word was. It was guesses or feels or something like that. It wasn't anything concrete, but it was a uh, one of those kind of statements but he thinks feels uh that the season will start on time um but he also feels that uh it would be without fans in the stands so for the september 6th op or 5th excuse me opener uh for the miami hurricanes that's what uh blake james put out there um and that was not necessarily a concrete statement again that was his uh thoughts feelings i forget the word that he used but it was something nebulous like that um but yeah it seems you know again that we're starting to see movement uh, towards there being football in the fall. Um, the actual way that that will look, you know, other kind of considerations, you know, if they're fans in the stands, Barry Jackson from the Miami Herald wrote a nice piece where he was talking about, you know, so if, if the season happens in the fall and fans are allowed in the stands, but we're still following some kind of social distancing rules and, you know, constraints on how many people – uh, can be in the facility at one time, who gets to go to the games? You know, so that was a, a thing that he evaluated at the Miami Herald and things like that. So again, yeah, you know, well, there are guys on campus, there are guys coming back to campus. There have been, you know, plenty of videos of guys working out where they are, uh, you know, whether that's in Miami or elsewhere. Uh, you know, De'Aaron King has been out there, the wide receivers, Mark Pope, D. Wiggins, we've seen. Uh, we've seen some weightlifting from some other guys, some of the high school commits uh, who were not able to enroll early but are coming down. Uh, so we're starting to see that. We're getting towards that. Uh, but again, yeah, you know, a single step is still a step. What is going on with my light? Lord Jesus. Um, yeah, single step is still a step, and we're look, looks like we're stepping that way. The situation that we have in the stadiums would mirror what we see out in retail establishments and that I see at work and other places in regards to, okay, limitations, obviously, on the capacity versus uh, the crowd ratio. And I've heard those estimations concerning other schools and other football programs. Yeah. If your place seats 100,000, maybe it's 20 to 50. And then I would anticipate that there is going to be a circulation of traffic, just like you see again in retail establishments, possibly at your place of business, where you see, and then maybe there are increments of people that are allowed into the stadium four hours before, 345 three hours and 30 minutes prior to separate them and then funnel the traffic into the stadium and then separate people, have seats removed if it needs to come to that to ensure for the most part social distancing. And I'm sure we could go into all sorts of details of how it could be arranged. Uh, and then in addition to that, you brought up the, the concern of the challenge of determining who those people would be. We have uh, huge football programs that pack out stadiums and there would have to be some type of uh, merit system, I would guess, possibly half random, half merit, or some combination of the two. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting thing because, um, you know, you've sold these tickets, uh, especially for the season ticket holders. So, uh, you know, Giovanni from Hialeah, why is he not entitled to going to the game as opposed to Frank from Miami Beach? You know, and I get, okay, well, okay, maybe that wasn't a great example because people say, well, if you live on Miami Beach, you probably bought a higher caliber ticket, so you spent more money, da, da, da. You know, but if you got a guy from, you know, Central Fort Lauderdale and a guy from Hialeah, a guy from Doral, you know, they both have uh, season tickets and things like that. What's to say? And they've had the season tickets for both five years. You know, they're both in the same, you know, price range, like da, 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 all things being equal. 
what's the determining factor? You know, and you do have to make a decision uh, or have a, a process to make a decision, uh, you know, to move forward. And I know that this is a different engagement that we've talked about, but this is similar to recruiting where, you know, if all things being equal, you got to make a choice. So we're seeing a similar this and this is a binary situation. If you're getting to, OK, well, we have room for one or the other, you know, Giovanni and his family or, you know, Frank and his family from Fort Lauderdale. We have space for one of them in the stadium. And there has to be a choice made. So you have to have a foundation to make that choice. I don't know what that is, but, you know, these are all the kind of things that I'm sure that the athletic department and ticket sales and, you know, customer care are all talking about because, you know, it matters. I would think that the first determination would be uh, taking a sample or a survey. Well, just flat out asking everyone, are you comfortable with coming back to the games and giving that option um, for those people that aren't comfortable coming back? Uh, to the games, the first out. Right. But let's say I'm not. Give me a refund? Probably not. So then what are we going to do, you know, on the financial side? Because like there is that, you know, I've bought a thing that I'm not comfortable in redeeming because of, you know, this. I mean, they, like we can go down the hypothetical, you know, uh, rabbit hole, you know, with this and with many topics, but there's just a lot going on. 